there was a move a few years ago to develop so-called binary chemical weapons. These are bombs or presumably other munitions, shells, in which two chemicals would be stored and only after you fired the weapon would they combine and react to make the nerve agent. In the case of VX, one of the reagents was a molecule like this one here on the table, which contained carbon, oxygen, phosphorus and nitrogen. So this compound here uh, is called QL now, and uh, that's not a particularly nasty substance. And the other reagent was solid sulphur. So in the middle of the bomb was a cylinder of stainless steel filled with sulphur. And we take elemental sulphur. If we heat these two together it, over 70 odd, uh, 70 or 80 degrees, um, this initially reacts with the phosphorus, the sulphur, to make uh, this bond here. And then this group migrates down here. And that happens at a fairly rapid process. So the idea was to have elemental sulphur, which is just a nice yellow powder, um, and this other substance QL, and within the actual missile, those were called binary missiles or binary bombs, the chemical reaction would occur to make the very nasty nerve agent. When the bomb was launched, an electric motor cut open the stainless steel cylinder, the sulphur and the other chemical started reacting, and by the time the bomb landed, all, all being well, or all be, being badly, depending your point of view, the VX was made. And that, of course, made the bomb much easier to assemble with much less risk of anyone uh, being killed in making the bomb itself. Um, and also it meant that if you had to dismantle these and get rid of them, then it was also a much easier process to do that. The problem was that it wasn't terribly successful because chemical reactions depend on temperature, the rate of the reaction, and the temperature of the bomb was not necessarily constant, and so the rate of the reaction was not always the same between launching it and hitting the target. Fortunately, most of the binary chemical weapons have now been abandoned. I think it's important to remember that chemical weapons were first invented or at least promoted by the German chemist Fritz Haber and it has turned out that his chemical weapons have actually been quite useful in the treatment of cancer. So although the development of these weapons has been terrible, there have been some positive outcomes. But now with the destruction of most of the chemical weapons and hopefully soon all, the important thing is to eliminate the precursor compounds, the ones which could be used to make them, from normal industrial chemistry, so that industrial chemical processes do not use chemicals which could be diverted to making nerve gases or other chemical weapons. And I'm pleased to say that the OPCW is making considerable progress with this, and green chemistry is helping to eliminate these dangerous compounds. That this would burst twice as much as a single bubble, but you see, it's more or less the same. So you can't always predict what's going to happen.